Thank you. Thank you so much. Wow, I'm pretty nervous. So when I got here, I looked through the booklet and I realized I'm the only one that looks different. I'm wearing a cap, no one else wearing a cap. So I, I always ask myself, is this a disadvantage or an advantage to look very, very different? But my grandma always told me, just try your best to be very different so you stand out. So I'm hoping that's a good thing. Um, my journey is quite accidental. Uh, the birth wasn't, I was born perfectly fine. But how I got involved was accidental. If you watch Mission Impossible, you know the, the scene where they go like, if the mission, if you should accept it, is to do this. I did not choose the mission. I believe the mission chose me. You know, it sounds, it sounds weird, but it's true. Because um, I started as a musician. Let me tell you a bit about myself. So um, my parents are diplomats. Uh, my dad worked for Wisma Putra. So I grew up abroad. We lived in Jordan, Venezuela, Algeria, Paris. Oui, je peux parler français un peu, mais pas très bien. But um, I grew up abroad, um, and then I came back to Malaysia, and I studied at ISKL, did the International Baccalaureate. Um, so I am a nerd. I love to study. I love history. I love English. I love French. But along high school, I became a, a rebel. I had middle child syndrome. If you guys know what middle child syndrome is, I was a middle child. Me and my parents didn't get along. So I listened to Eminem, Jay-Z, Fabulous, and I became a bit rebellious. So after high school, with the IB diploma, which is a hard course at ISKL, I got the IB diploma. I told my mom and dad, I want to rap. They were, they were not happy, because the government sponsors the education when you, when you serve the country, when you serve the government, with my Putra. Uh, they sponsor the ambassador to kids all the way to college, university. I could choose anywhere in the world where I want to study, and they would fund it. Plus, my grades were good as well. Um, but I decided to rap. So I am a nerd stuck in a rapper's body. So that's what it was. So uh, long before I kick off, let me play a quick video for you guys just to get you up to, up to par with my journey so far. So, it all started from music. I was 17 years old when I had my first single on radio. It was called Them Girls. Them Girls Around the World. You don't know that song? Of course you know that song. Anyways, <laughs> one day I made a song called What Let, What Peace. What Let, What Peace. So, from that song, it became an anti-booty campaign. Hi, I'm Kairi Jamaluddin. I'm the Minister of Youth and Sports Malaysia and I really, really support Caprice's campaign to stop bullying, especially at schools. So stop bullying at schools. What let, what peace. It went viral. Uh, parents were doing the sign, celebrities were doing it, teachers, students from all across Malaysia. Just to support an anti-bully campaign. What let, what peace. But from that campaign, I was invited to perform and talk at a lot of schools. I was performing, talking, performing, talking. In three years, I was at over 248 schools. One day, at one of these schools, um, I saw the computer lab. It was locked, it had a grill, padlock, full on security. And I asked the Chegu, like, oh, Chegu, kenapa computer lab ni tutup macam tu? It's like, oh, we don't use it often. You know, maybe once a month. I was like, oh, why? I'm like, why? Why would the place, the one place in the school which is about technology, innovation, is the one place that is the most neglected? It makes no sense. So that's when I was inspired to build a classroom. For this to work, I want to empower the teachers. I want to go across Malaysia and find orang yang berilmu. People that can share knowledge, who are good at teaching math, chemistry, physics, sajara, any, any, any knowledge, agama, anything. If you have knowledge to share, I want to empower you. Second step is how do we revitalize the spirit of learning among the students? Because if we create a great platform, but the orang nak belajar, there's no point. Then we're making a white elephant. So I want to revitalize the spirit of learning among my youth, among our youth. Second inspiration was from a tuition center uh, in Moose Studio Upper Point. I did a bit of research and this teacher is very famous in KL. But how can his knowledge, his ilmu, his way of teaching be available for someone in Sabah, be available for someone in Sarawak, Shunganu, Kantan, Joho? What can he use? And the answer is, there's nothing right now. And that's why I built Classroom.com. Learning is now social. 
All right, thank you for the video. Let's go back to my PowerPoint. Oh, PowerPoint. <laughs> it's, it's coming. So that's sort of my journey for the past three years. It started from a music and anti-bully campaign. And going to all these schools, I realized that there's a lot of problems that has to be addressed. Um, I know on the macro level, um, there's, there's things that have been highlighted, like how our education policies are separating the has and has not. We have a big budget for education, but standards remain very, very poor. Um, so when I went to all these schools, I realized there's so much potential. I, I, so much potential in the kids, in the teachers. So really, I've been going school to school, and we collaborate with the police force just for my anti-bully campaign. Um, so it, was, it went viral, so that's when it, it, it went viral and uh, so forth. So when I went to this one school, it was located next to a, a golf course. I won't name the school for obvious reasons. I don't want to put them on, on blast. But um, I was surprised after I performed and gave a talk, I realized that um, the computer lab was locked, had a padlock, and it was a weekday. If it was a weekend, I understand why you would want to secure your computer labs and whatnot. Um, and I asked the teacher, why is the computer lab closed in that way? And she said, oh, we don't even use it. We hardly use it. Maybe we use, we use it once a month, twice a month. Uh, we, we go on a Frog VLE or use PowerPoint and, and, and Microsoft Word. And I was really shocked. I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty shocking how a school in KL hardly ever uses the computer lab to teach. Because the moment these kids leave the school, they are exposed to Candy Crush, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and, and this is the reality of what we are going through today. Back in my school days, when I was in school, let me just fast forward it, there's a thing called social life versus social media. So when I was in school, in Jordan, Venezuela, and so forth, social, 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 social life, <laughs> I'm nervous, excuse me, was inviting friends to come over to play the Nintendo. Calling my friends, hey, let's go to the football field and play some football. Oh, if I find a cute girl in school, I want to call her on the phone, I call her on the phone, and we talk for hours until my mom complained about the phone bill. But that was my social life in school. Fast forward to now, this is the social life for kids nowadays. Um, they use social media to communicate, to play games, to interact. The phone is your new best friend. And so the, the climate, the, the culture among students have changed. They're, they're more, oh, they, they see more things outside than I would have seen when I was in school. So we have to find ways of how to incorporate these elements within the school environment. Because if we don't incorporate these elements inside school, you're going to lose them. I think the last presentation was perfect. How don't, there's one quote where it says, do not allow knowledge to chase the child. Make sure the child chases the knowledge. And that's pretty pinpoint accurate of why I started Classroom.com. Um, being a Muslim and seeing how Islam has been portrayed globally with all the you know, terrorism and when you meet people from overseas, they, they find that you're a Muslim, they'll think, you know, beard, a bomb, you know, and we're, we have that sort of branding. So when, I've, when I met uh, Mufti Mank, who's a famous scholar, I told Mufti Mank, is it not the fundamental of Islam to seek and share knowledge? If that is the fundamental, the root of Islam, to seek and share knowledge, then we should do everything in our power to make sure this happens. But how, how often does it even happen? You know, back in the days when people get on boats and horses, to share, they, they, they arrive at a port, they share knowledge about astronomy, science, uh, the planets. It was so tough, because they're on horses, they had to like, go to different ports and different cities. But nowadays, what, what do we have? We have a thing called a smartphone, right? So there's no excuse for a teacher or a kid to not wanting to share or seek knowledge, which is the very fundamental of Islam. So when I met Mufti Mang, Mufti Mang said, Aris, you are crazy, but what you're doing is fundamentally part of what our religion is all about. So that's sort of my journey, so social media uh, and social, social life, how things have changed. So we have to find ways to make sure that these kids are the ones chasing knowledge and not the, one, not, not the knowledge chasing the kid. Um, so it went viral. I even got a chance to meet the Deputy Minister of Education. Uh, so that was really, really cool. Uh, we, we just built a simple website, to, uh, an educational website for kids to play games. In the very beginning, it was a gaming, a gaming website. We built educational games and allowed kids to play. Uh, celebrities were doing my anti-bully sign and so forth. So it did go viral. I even had a chance. It was a huge honor. I got to meet um, the, the previous Prime Minister, Tun Mahade, on January 5th. 
how did I meet him? Unfortunately, Mar Marina's not here. I would have loved to share with her how I met him. But basically, um, <laughs> I emailed him. So what happened was, throughout the, throughout the years of um, campaigning, I went to a lot of ministries, knocking on the door, hey, we need some money to fund this school project. Hey, I need some money to fund this, this, this campaign. And no one would reply to my knocks. No one would reply to my emails. And I was frustrated. I was like, man, I elected these people to be in power. We are the right yet. You serve me, but you, you're not even answering my calls. So I took a risk. You know, one of the most powerful men in the world, I emailed him. Uh, Basically, I told him, you can't read it, but I told him, listen, I'm broke. The website is about to go down. <laughs> uh, I met a lot of people, and I list down the names. I met this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, useless, useless, useless. <laughs> brought him, brought, <laughs> brought one guy to karaoke, and, you know, we sang songs, but no replies after that. Um, and next thing you know, <laughs> two, two weeks later, I got a reply. Salam, Mr. Aris, please be informed that young Bat Muhammad Tun Dr. Mahdi has agreed to meet you. So I was like blown away. I was jumping up and down. I had about 34 ringgit in my bank account. The website was about to go down and I told my friends, wait, there's hope. We don't have to shut down. I'm going to see the man himself. So I was blessed to meet Tun Mahade and uh, we spoke for about an hour and a half. Um, one of the things that got to me with um, my meeting with Tun Mahade was the importance of value. Uh, he shared me a very simple story uh, when he said the Look East policy or why he told Malaysians at that point in time to look east. Um, the Japanese, Japan was the only country to be bombed by the atomic bomb, right? But in a matter of five years, they were, they were able to go from being bombed to becoming one of the top eco economic peop um, countries in, uh, in Asia. And Tun said, Ari, do you know why that is? Do you know why Japan was able to go from being bombed to being one of the top economic in the country? It comes to the mindset. The people in Japan, they value their work. They value themselves. They value time. That's why they're able to produce great things. Because the, he shared me a story how if they don't do something really well, they kill themselves. It's like honor killing, or they resign, or they quit. So he wanted me and said, Aris, if, you do, if I do help you, which he, he later point, he, he helped me out later on, he says, please teach the kids to value time to value themselves and to value their work. If you can achieve this, then Classroom can, can become a great platform. So what did I, what did I realize after I, meet, I met so many people? I, I met teachers, parents, kids, celebrities. I met ex-prime ministers. I realized when you look at all these pictures, that's, that's crazy how this one movement, one platform, was able to become a bridge between kids, parents, celebrities, teachers, political figures, uh, political figures, ex-prime minister. So I realized we have become a unique bridge between these, these people. And this bridge is so important. Before I walk away today, the bridge, this image of a bridge is very important. Because I know we built great platforms, my, my, my Vera, open learning and so forth. It's great to have awesome technology, but we have to equally invest in the people, the mindset of our people, so that the moment that um, the, the technology is, is, is more open, to the rest of the country, the people are equipped with not just the skills, but as well as a, as a mental know-how of what they are getting involved in. And that is sort of the key image for, for my speech, is a bridge. We are a bridge. We became a bridge. So we became a bridge between students and teachers, bridge between education and social media, and more importantly, the bridge between education and popular culture. This is so important. Why do I say this? Because I'm a musician. When I perform at all these schools, I built a bond with these kids, like a bond that most teachers wish they could have. Because the moment I spoke about anti-bully, these kids opened up, as opposed to having a policeman come in, bullying is very bad, and everyone will fall asleep. But when I speak to these kids, there's a connection. And this connection is, is real. You can't, you can't replicate the connection. It's because of the music. It's because of what I, I spoke about. And kids would openly WhatsApp me, tweet me, Instagram me, Facebook me about what they go through. And, what, and from there, I was able to learn. And going back to what I said earlier, as much on the macro level, we want to create policies, we want to implement systems, but we must also address the micro level of what happens in these communities, whether it's Sandakan, Johor, Seremban. We must understand the kids at the micro level, and only then can we start building these bridges. Only then can we implement great, great platforms, great um, ideas and great projects, because that is, that is the key. The moment a spark can be built at the micro level, 
I believe everything will be solved. Like the quote earlier where, allow the kid to chase the knowledge. Don't allow knowledge to chase the kid. Very awesome quote. So we, we, and on this bridge is where I'm planning on creating a new ecosystem. On this unique small little bridge is when I plan to create a new ecosystem where teachers can communicate with students, where parents can understand the kids better, where kids can communicate and complete and uh, play on this bridge. It's a, a unique bridge. Um, what I realized in my campaign that we appeal to every race. Marina and the previous uh, speaker had a picture where a colorless society, and it's true. It, it can be achieved. It's just how do we package the information so that kids can swallow and accept it, as opposed to just being academic, this is it, you know? And kids nowadays, because of social media, popular culture, it's so hard to package an uh, academic platform and uh, tell a kid to, to study. You, you need more than just books to inspire kids nowadays. So we've done a lot of groundwork, um, and uh, we met some great, great political figures. And um, this is before I met them my day, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, so we are, we, we did, we, 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 we have become a bridge and I plan to cultivate this bridge. Um, we have a unique relationship with students, parents. Uh, so as I said, before policies and decisions can be made on the macro level, we need to understand and address everything on the micro. Only then can we really truly make changes in the country. Okay, so we built the first platform. It was called Jiffy.my. This is when I almost went broke because we built games, uh, educational games. Uh, we got a grant from MCMC. They gave us half a mil, um, and we built educational games for about a year. So um, halfway through the platform, I realized money was going down, building games is expensive, and I realized I'm about to go broke, the website is about to crash, unless I change something. Because there's no way you can sell the games. You can get games for free on iTunes and whatnot. No one would pay for games. So on the last minute, we decided to revamp the whole website redesign, recode everything, and we created a unique backend where any teacher can create their own content, market and sell it on the platform itself. Um, that is the moment that we went viral because it allowed anyone to become an author. I don't have to create content anymore, I don't have to create games. Now, uh, a Gama teacher from Trunganu, maybe she teaches four kids in, in Trunganu, a Gama religion, and she's a really good teacher, but how can she use a platform to get 20 kids, 50 kids, 100 kids? If you see social media now in e-commerce, if I were to sell a tudong or shoes or a power bank, what can I use? I can use Facebook, Instagram, everyone's like an entrepreneur now. They, they get a power bank and sell for 50 ringgit, immediately you're an entrepreneur. But if you are a person with ilmu, with knowledge, what platform can you use now to sell that knowledge, to share that knowledge? There isn't a platform. So that's when we built classroom.com, learning is now social. I have three minutes, so I'm gonna speed through it. So our number, two, we had two simple mandates. Number one is we want to empower educators to share knowledge. Number two, we want to revitalize the spirit of learning among our youth. That is the two key mandates of uh, my company and the website. Um, so we went to Johor uh, late last year, um, six, six different schools, um, and it went viral again. Teachers were talking about classroom.com. Long story short, uh, I was even made as an icon for this year's UITM Education and Career Fair. Caprice, an icon. I was like, are you when he called me, can you become the icon for UITM? I was like, are you sure you got the right number? <laughs> you know, because I, I do music and whatnot. But even, even this was very shocking for me. But long story short, um, the platform went viral the past four months. We were in Johor. Um, Iskanda, which is the regional development authority, they're a huge corporation in Johor. They even gave us support. Um, and recently, the Minister of Education gave Erda an award for advancing the nation's technical and vocational program in Johor. Long story short, about a month ago, I made the news, sold some shares. Um, anyone from income tax here? No one from income tax? So we made, we know, we, we, we sold half the shares for 2.5 million, and that allowed me, that gave me a good injection to really expand on this bridge I'm trying to build. Um, so this is Johor. The, the unique thing about Johor is, they're very open, they're very progressive. If you've ever been to Johor, you, you would know that there is um, that is very progressive and they have a different approach. And the, the king recently announced that he wants to have English as the medium for communication in Johor. And I thought it was a very bold step and I commended on that move. So we recently sold shares and now Classroom is just about to grow. Uh, 
So this is, we believe this is the formula for transformation. There has to be a synergy between technology, education, and culture. Okay. We're running out of time. Okay. So in this journey of Classroom.com, I've, I've met some great, great people. Dilma Hade, Mufti Mank, the MB of Johor, Minister in Education. Um, and it's been amazing. It's been an amazing journey. Um, so before I close uh, my talk segment, what do I want you to walk away from today? If the 21st learning is the destination of where we want to go, whether it is uh, Open Learning or MyVera and all the other great platforms, if that's the destination, allow me to become the bridge to that destination. Let's get people on this bridge, teachers, parents, students. And on this bridge, we teach about value, soft skills, of how to think outside the box. And the moment we have more people on this bridge, regardless of backgrounds and race or religion, is when we can say, OK, go. Now we're ready to go. Because only then can we minimize the gap. And, uh, and I believe that's when we can make uh, big changes in Malaysia and the region. My name is Aris Ramli, and we are in the business of building bridges. Thank you.